Hello everyone and welcome to an application review that I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing Mac X DVD Ripper Pro. This is a fantastic DVD ripping application. I can't stress that enough. Now not too long ago I did an application, uh, no sorry, I did a tutorial on Handbrake and how to rip DVDs. I also used MetaX to gather all of the metadata for that DVD. I can tell you straight away that Mac X DVD Ripper Pro is a massive upgrade over Handbrake. Uh, I'm not bashing Handbrake or anything, but now that I've started using this to rip my DVDs, I'm really not going to go back. Um, so, for a limited offer, I'm going to put the link in the video description. Uh, for a limited offer, you can get this for $35 and you get the iPhone converter for free. That's an absolute steal. So I'll put the link in the video description. Now then, let's close this and uh, take a look at the application itself. So, the first thing you'll notice is the interface. Now, the interface looks fairly... Um, fairly simple considering the amount of features that this particular application has um, but it's also quite sort of retro looking maybe I guess you could say um, it's a combination of things really that give it the sort of retro kind of look I guess it's these buttons here these kind of buttons and the fact that it's the older generation Apple TV uh, what looks to be the older generation iDevices, old iTunes logo, old iPod Nano, but it's basically saying there that it gives you a, v a wide variety of formats to choose from uh, when you're converting. So this is the application itself, it's really really awesome. Um, basically along the top you have different ways of uh, loading your content, but first I'm just going to jump straight into the options menu to show you what's in options. You have your default audio language and your default subtitle language. You can choose between different languages right there. You also have your output folder. Over here are your profile settings. Now, of course, um, all of the presets are down here, but this is for setting your default profile. Um, you can select different devices, let's say, I don't know, PSP, and then select uh, these different options and follow everything there if you wanted to select a default profile. You can also give your profile a name, so that's really cool. Um, so that's that, that's the options menu. Here we have uh, loading a DVD disc, now I have Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire in the drive at the moment. If you had multiple DVDs in your Mac, if you had more than one super drive, I guess they would show up in a list here. You can also browse to the DVD path, so of course you'd go down uh, to here and there is your video TS folder. Um, You've also got ISO options, we've looked at the um, options menu, and then you have this rename thing here. Not too sure what this is, but it's something to do with the file name and um, where it pulls its information from, such as the video resolution or whatever. I haven't really looked into that option. Um, so what we're going to do is load in Harry Potter. Let's hit OK. And what it does is it first off gives you a preview here, so we can scrub through. And it just loads, because this is a DVD, of course, and it gives you a little preview of the film. So that's really, really handy to have. Now then, it lists all of the titles on the DVD. Now, as you can see by the duration, this is two hours and 30 minutes long. And as you can tell, it's the movie, you know. So, of, um, so of course, that's going to be your full movie. It's not you know, these are just sort of special features and anything. So, um, of course, you're going to want to drag these out all the way. And um, that's selected as, you know, just title one to import. Uh, two hours 30, that's the film that we have. So, um, here we have the option to choose between six channel and two channel. So, this is 5.1 surround sound and this is stereo. Um, this is possibly the only downfall that I can find with the app. You can It tells you that it's six channel, but it doesn't tell you what codec it's using. Um, when I was ripping with Handbrake, I think this is a far better application, but when I was ripping with Handbrake, um, you got to choose between uh, six channel discrete, uh, Dolby, just regular Dolby surround sound, uh, as in Dolby Digital, Dolby Pro Logic, Dolby Pro Logic 2, uh, DTS, you got to choose between all of those different codecs. Here, at least you can choose uh, surround sound, that's the main thing. So of course I want to rip that in six channels because I've got a home theatre system. This is where you can um, 
Select your subtitle, so of course disable. Start time and end time, pretty self-explanatory, and this is your output folder, so we're going to leave it to the default output folder. Now then, this is where it starts to get really interesting. Let's take a look at the copy option first. So, under this tab here, copy to um, MKV, sorry, I can't read there. <laughs> anyway, moving on, um, you can select uh, MP4 or uh, H.264. And this is just a straight up copy. Um, of course, you've got different options here. You've got your uh, video bit rate, your audio codec. Ah, right. Do you know what, guys? I'm an idiot. It says DTS there. <laughs> okay, well, at least I know that you're, I'm selecting DTS down there. So that's absolutely awesome. Um, sorry about that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, we're going to go over these options in a minute. But first, uh, first off, we'll go uh, over here. You can copy to an MPEG file. It gives you a little explaining thing down here and then a uh, description rather <laughs> and then DVD backup this is a fantastic feature um, it basically acts as a DVD decryptor so your video TS folder will be available on your Mac um, this is pretty cool because a lot of home theater um, sort of media center interfaces maybe boxy or XBMC or anything like that um, can very happily read video TS folders and ripping the video TS folder is a fantastic way of um, Getting the full quality out of your DVD and not encoding it at all So that's a really good option if you do have that kind of playback facility But of course, I'm an iTunes user. So I use the iTunes tab uh, Before we go to iTunes, you've got the simple mp4 tab. They're very very similar um, You know, you've got all the different things up here. You can you can tell that these are you know, really similar. Look at the options. Um, to music, I believe this just rips the soundtrack. Um, everything else is self-explanatory. This bottom bit here is sort of device central. It focuses on devices. So you've got iPhone and Apple TV, and you can choose um, the different iPhone generations, which is really cool. Uh, along with the Apple TV, of course. So, um, yeah, that's very handy. Now then, what I'm going to do is... Um, you can see all of these are pretty much the same. You're going to be looking at all the different types there. You know, easy stuff. It does everything, you know, Android. It does the whole hit. Um, but let's just go to iTunes because I haven't really looked into these. I don't really copy device-specific um, videos because I don't put my videos on devices. So... Um, that's not really my kind of thing, but this is where it gets interesting for me. So um, I'm going to stick that up to 320 and that is basically me good to go use high quality engine, awesome stuff, uh, format, we're going to go H.264 and I'm pretty much ready to go. You can put in your own custom resolution over here once you change this option, but that's absolutely fine. Now down here, you can select um, how many cores it uses when it um, encodes the DVD. So if I wanna use my Mac for a lot of things at the same time, I can limit this to four cores or two cores. Obviously it's gonna take longer, but the fantastic thing about Mac X DVD Ripper Pro is the fact that it's fully multi-thread compatible so um, I can use all eight of my cores brilliant it means I can get a really fast encoding time um, yeah that's fantastic uh, here we have a deinterlacing option force AV sync so that's uh, syncing up the audio and video uh, if it's out of sync and of course we have safe mode now um, safe mode is something to do with when you receive errors or something along those lines I'm not too sure if I'm fully honest with you but anyway uh, awesome program let's hit start and everyone take note of the start time so we're at just gone quarter to seven and uh, we're gonna see how long this takes now bear in mind that I'm doing H.264 with very high quality audio uh, six channel audio in DTS and um, oh actually actually stop 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 yes I want to stop that I want to actually look okay that's no problem at all. All right, I'm going to start again. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's the, the application. While that's doing that, I'm going to show you, um, if I haven't already, because this is my second dig of the video. I don't think I've shown you Doom. But anyway, if I have, you can look at it again. Um, I ripped Doom, which, by the way, isn't the best film in the world. But 
it looks fantastic. Really, really nice, solid DVD rip. And it's going to look great when I put it in iTunes. You really in can't fault 20. it. And the file size is pretty small as well. So this uh, is what it looks like. Get any information from it? It also sounds wonderful. I've got six channels rocking out on here and it'll sound lovely when I use it with my surround sound system. Nice bit of blood and guts there was there. But uh, yeah, this is Doom. Random DVD that I had that's not in iTunes. <laughs> I wonder why. But um, you don't know me. Yeah, as you can see the detail here. Of course, I compress when I upload YouTube videos. So you're not going to be able to get the full detail because, you know, I really, really compress my uh, final exports down. But the detail on the face here is amazing. It's basically just like watching... Uh, watching a DVD from a DVD player on a nice quality TV. As you can see over here, the text, you know, pretty, pretty damn good quality. In text, you can always see pixelization when you've got a bad rip. But anyway, um, that's Doom. I wanted to show you Doom. Let's find, um, there you go. Now, let's see how long this takes. It's chugging along there, doing its thing. Um, yeah, I'll pause it and we'll get back to it in a minute. By the way guys, I thought I'd mention that Doom is 1.36 gigabytes. So for that kind of quality, you know, versus 4 gigabytes plus for a DVD, you really can't go wrong. So I'm loving the file size that I eventually gain out of this application um, when I'm using H.264 on iTunes compression. So we're at 99% and the conversion has taken just about an hour. Now then, um, there you go, it's done. Now. What was that like for conversion time? Well, I can confirm that it's brilliant. Now, I can um, convert a DVD in Handbrake um, in about, ooh, maybe 35, 40 minutes, but it's nowhere near the total um, complete quality of this application. Um, I could convert a DVD really quickly if I used a tiny resolution and didn't use H.264 and stuff like that. But an hour for ripping and encoding a DVD is absolutely awesome, especially considering you're getting full um, practically DVD quality. So um, let's take a look at what it looks like. Here it is. Let's put it into full screen. I've just paused there to show you that the quality is really nice. Really pleased with this rip, even just by looking at the logo. And I can tell you, right from these scenes... Who's that? Yeah, the, this looks fantastic. Really, really good. So, it's a very long film, so the file size... Um, if we exit out of that, let's check out the file size. Extremely pleased with that for the quality. You can't go wrong. This application is top notch. So, um, I know it's been a little bit spread out, what with the conversion and everything, guys, and I'm sorry for that. But this has been my review of Mac X DVD Ripper Pro. It's a fantastic DVD ripping software. I know I keep saying how brilliant it is all the way through the video, but um, I love having high quality films in iTunes. Now, I don't really care about resolution. Uh, my projector isn't high def, so, you know getting everything in 1080p and Blu-ray and everything isn't really a concern of mine. My concern is just to get a fantastic looking uh, DVD rip with nice, rich, vibrant colours and no pixelization and no graininess. And that's exactly what I get from ripping a DVD with this application. It's just as good as watching the DVD directly from the DVD drive using DVD player. And if I say the word DVD one more time, I'm going to go mental. But anyway, thank you very much for watching my review of Mac X DVD Ripper Pro. I'll leave a link to this program in the video description. I highly recommend you download it. And um, if anyone wants to see an updated full tutorial on ripping DVDs, then I can probably get that out in the next few weeks or the next couple of months, um, but revolving around this application instead of Handbrake. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.